Please identify yourself. Who am I? Please articulate your password. Let me in. To see, to be this is an interface where man meets machine. Hands, eyes, vocal cords, menus, commands, graphics. These are the elements and the goal to communicate easily with a computer. Welcome to TRW's Man-Machine Interface Laboratory. I'm David Krebs. We're going to demonstrate some things here, research into an aspect of system design, the link between operators and the computational tools critical to solving today's complex military problems. Peter Wong of our Software and Information Systems Division heads up our lab. Peter, can you tell us what you mean by the Man-Machine Interface, or MMI? Well, the concept is pretty simple. The trigger for your electric drill, for example, or your steering wheel in your car is an example of a man-machine interface. It just means how a human interaction gets translated into signals so a machine can understand. Now, uh, electric drill is pretty simple, of course. In our facility, we are using machine to do information processing. And when our product is information, man-machine interface is a two-way street. As we think of it here, MMI is concerned of how information is exchanged between a human and a computer. Computer. Ready. What type? Ready. Computer. Ready. Show fault. In its simplest context, it's eyes looking at the video screen or fingers typing on a keyboard. Computer. Ready. Show problem. But that's only the tip of the iceberg. We want to utilize all of man's faculty, his hearing, his voice, even his vision, to track and point objects on the screen. Computer. Ready. More details. All may have a place in interaction between the operator and his system. Part of the problem, of course, is to translate the human signal so that a computer can understand it, and vice versa. Flying ready. But that's only a fraction of what's MMI's function. Getting the computer to do what you want at the right time, making the interface easy to understand and readily usable. Computer. Ready. Show redundancy. Designing a resilient interface, one that could survive and work with the user, and most importantly, deliver useful and understandable results. Those are the challenges of MMI research. Thanks, Peter. Typically, a project uses the lab to help configure hardware and display data. MMI is important, perhaps critical to the success of large computer-based systems. The problem? It's subjective. One user may have one idea of what makes a good interface, and another might want to see something very different. The proper interface depends on the skills of the individual. We must match those to the complexities of the computer. An experienced user will want an interface quite different from that desired by a less sophisticated user. Our test bed here consists of two aspects. Each workstation combines state-of-the-art hardware with a dialogue design language called Flare. The language is a computer-aided design tool for simulating man-machine interfaces. At the workstation, Flare interconnects the various types of equipment. The user picks and chooses, searching for the precise pieces to fit his particular puzzle. Flare integrates these devices so their value can be proven easily. Flare always delivers the proper protocols, whether commands are received from a trackball or a light pen. Users can experiment with various devices and change from one to another in moments. In the laboratory, we can control the environment, the lighting, arrangement of input-output devices. We can even simulate background noise. Each workstation has two display screens plus a conventional alphanumeric terminal. The 25-inch high-resolution color display has 1,024 lines of definition, two to three times better than the standard television monitor.
The alphanumeric terminal, a 15-inch CRT, displays text, while the 19-inch monochrome monitor presents secondary material which is not color dependent. Flare is a very friendly graphic system. With it, TRW interfaces are brought about by building interactive dialogues. It's called a show-by-example menu system. The user graphically shows the computer how interactions are to proceed and data displayed. Why bother with all this? Early simulations are necessary because MMI needs to be dealt with before hardware choices or software architectures become inflexible. TRW's testbed, wherein MMI concepts in general are tested and program-specific interfaces simulated, is an attempt to deal with this problem. In the past, these issues have been worked late in the software development process, too late. Potential users deserve the opportunity to react early to proposed interfaces. How much information should be shown? How much detail? How should it be organized? Screen resolution, character sizes, graphics, timing, even costs and software maintenance questions impact these decisions or are impacted by them. As scenarios, simulated slices of a system's interface, take shape, the user constructs displays frame by frame. Each one contains descriptions of the graphics and related possible interactions. These interactions are tied to control structures which in turn command Flare to execute other functions or displays. By dynamically interacting with the scenario, the user is able to determine its usefulness and do so before the system becomes operational. Flare operates as a UIMS, a user interface management system. It manages and controls the interface, translating user instructions to signals the computer can understand and vice versa. But the man-machine interface, no matter how well simulated, is hard to validate until it is integrated with its application programs. These are the real working programs of the system, the large number crunchers which deliver product data to the MMI for display. If application programs exist, these too can be linked via Flare to the displays. Flare, the UIMS, takes the products of the application software and delivers a standard set of protocols to the appropriate display. By managing the interface between the user and the display and the application software and the display, Flare allows for rapid simulation of the MMI and very flexible alteration of it. As more and more application software becomes available, it too can be tied in through Flare to the simulated interfaces, replacing piece by piece the simulated data presented there. The whole process is very flexible, the result of the way Flare itself is structured. The user commands are controlled via a set of state tables. Each command has a state table in which a sequence of subroutines called micro-primitives are called upon to perform the computer's reactions. Micro-primitives are the building blocks, the most basic actions. Circle drawing, scenario control, colors. Micro-primitives in nearly unlimited combination create the display. The result? Flexibility. The state tables can be changed, the sequence of micro-primitives or the micro-primitives themselves. Flare is the glue that holds it all together. As a user interface management system, Flare manages the interactions between users, the interface, the hardware, and the portions of the application software already in existence. In fact, Flare is so helpful in designing user interfaces that a version of it is being designed for possible incorporation in delivered systems. Then, the UIMS might become an integral part of a system, maintaining the MMI and ensuring Flare's inherent flexibility throughout the life of the system. Under the auspices of the MMI lab, TRW has assembled a tool with which system users can direct system designers in the creation of an appropriate and useful interface. It's just one way we're working to solve the problems of today, and it's happening at TRW.